Hi everyone, it's Holly and I am the maker here at Missouri River Soap and I thought maybe we would try a little sit down video, a little package and chat if you will. I have really been into watching um, knitting, like I'm into knitting now and a lot of them do what they call a podcast and I just love the very personal sit down and I thought I have some packaging to do so why don't we do that today. So I have some stuff set up in front of me. We have unloaded a big white table from the cattle trailer finally. Um, I have a brand new chair from Costco, Swively. And so let's just, uh, let's just chat and package. I thought I'd show you a little bit about what I have going on for this uh, release. Now let me tell you, this is why I needed to sit. I had hoped to list my new products, you know, reopen the store around December 1. Well, things came up and life has been bumpy. And so I thought, well, we'll go with like the six. The six will be good, maybe the seven. And then something else came up yesterday morning. Today is the eighth, December 8th. And so we had to postpone it yet again. But you know what? It's, it's all in the perfect timing. So for some reason, I need not to have this uh, reopening quite yet. So I'm just going to work on packaging. And hey, maybe we just needed to have this little chat. You really don't know how many times I hear from my viewers that my videos help them to get through something and um, whether they're in the hospital you know having some depression etc so it really goes beyond my business it goes beyond the products themselves sometimes you just need to have a friend and sometimes the friend is just through the camera so that's what we're gonna do today alright so the main thing I have in front of me at the moment I'm going to have some like collections. So this one is the Evergreen. And so we have a cute little bath bomb. I just love this little tree bath bomb. And you'll have to ignore my dry hands and my gnarly fingernails because I'm not gonna have all pretty painted up nails like the knitting ladies do. That just, I tried that for a while this summer. My daughter and I both tried that. Hers would last three weeks. Mine lasted about a day if I was lucky. I am just too rough. So the bath bomb has coconut milk in this one. And I usually try to avoid coconut milk because actually one of my best friends um, struggles with coconut and it's like this form, she can handle it in soap because it kind of transforms in soap, but she can't handle it in like bath products. So I usually try to avoid that, but Jody, if you're listening, I am going to make you some bath bombs just for you. And I'm gonna load them with so much goodness. And I even bought a really fun mold to use. I just have to wait for it to come in. So I decided to go with a, like a vegan, a vegan set this time because my soaps are vegan and everything. And then I, okay, so let me, let's talk about the scent. So this one is Evergreen Pop. Now let me tell you, I'm calling it Evergreen Pop because I felt like the scent that I used in the soap was just too much. So it was just very earthy, which is wonderful and I love it in a soap, but I didn't know how much you wanted to 100% soak in that. So I took the Juniper and Balsam mix, which had lemon, apple, eucalyptus, and I added a like a raspberries and Prosecco fragrance. My husband thinks it's actually amazing. He loves it so much. So it gives it some brightness, the pop of the bubbly, and so I called it Evergreen Pop. Now, some of you will know about my pomegranate pop fragrance, and my notes are well buried on that, so I don't even know how to make that one right now, but I'm gonna have to dig that up. So the sugar scrub, the sugared whipped soap scrub is four ounces, and it's going to be, I'm hoping this is focusing, I think it is. Okay, so I do think it's actually focusing, but the screen is very small and my eyeballs are bad. So um, I'm just gonna really hope that it truly is. So this is the Evergreen Pop. And so I went with that same scent and it is just a single color, super cute little scrub. And I love that too. And then of course we have the Evergreen Soap, which just has the plain evergreen scent. 
So that's a fun little set. And I wanted to have a wax melt that went into this uh, set, but you know what? I didn't get my order. I waited for like four weeks for a particular order to come in and it just didn't work. And I wasn't like super set up for that right now. So I decided to just not worry about wax right now. And I will get to that on one of the next ones. So this set then is the Winterberry set. And it has the Winterberry soap. And I'll show you what the soaps look like here in just a little bit. I have the Winterberry soaps. And this one is cranberries, figs, apples, vanilla, and warm spices. It's just cozy and comforting and I love it. And I did not adjust this one at all for the scrubs or bath bombs. So then we have the Winterberry sugared whip soap scrub and this cute little santa type hat for the bath bomb bath fizzy bath bomb i never know what i'm calling these things but this one is coconut milk as well so part of my process here is that i did design labels but i haven't tested them out yet so i'm going to bring over the brand new cutter which I don't love it as much as my old cutter, which was had wax stuck in all these little things. But this one, um, this, this still has stuff stuck. It doesn't have like a, a dip here. My other one had like a little sunken in piece here and it made it so easy to mess with. So we're just gonna do that for now. We're just gonna use this one. But the other one may, the other one may end up coming back. I do use a lot of the, the paper cutter for a lot of projects. So this is just a test run. Not sure what I want to do. We'll see how it goes. Now I don't have a whole bunch of these sets because wow, it actually takes a lot more to make a batch of scrubs than one would think. So I wanted to kind of cut into the little berry doodad and just kind of have it sticking out to the side so that means this label is going to be a little bit smaller i may have to go back to the cutting board drawing board i guess for this one gosh i could feel like this would video would be hours and hours long so i'm gonna have to watch it let's see i was not going to cut this one off hmm I mean, it looks kind of weird, the two different sizes. wonder if I got that matched up pretty well. I really don't feel like I want to cut the tree. So we'll just see. And then it'll peel off if I need to, most likely. So any who's it. So I'm hoping to have my release next week. But who knows if that'll happen. I, I just can't guarantee that my products are going to arrive by Christmas at this point anyway because... Oh, it's snowing. I like it. Um, because... I kind of put this off kilter. Because I live out in the woods and it takes so much longer for mail to transit around here. So, my only holiday product is really the Mary Cranberry soap. So, I mean, that's cute, right? It works. We'll see. I'll let my, I put it off kilter for sure. Um, we'll let my mind and my eyeballs stew on that one for a little bit before I make a solid decision on the rest of them. And I just buy, like this is just a full sheet label from online labels. Online labels. Tried to put it a little bit more centered this time. I really do like how this one isn't quite as wide. And then it has the little bit cut off right there. I think that looks really nice. So, yeah. So, there we have that for now. So, also coming along is I have some menthol steamers. And I struggled. This, this whole thing's been a struggle, peeps. It really has. It's just a struggle. It's very difficult to do all of this when you're like, you've moved. You don't know where everything is. You... I like sold or just recycled most everything at this point and so I didn't have any shelves, didn't have any tables and it has been such a pain. And just what I think, I have what I need. We ran to Costco, bought another shelf last night, bought this chair. So these are the little tablet sizes, they're two 
by, well, they're not an inch thick, but they're two, two-ish by one and a half-ish by, I'd say that's three quarters-ish, I guess. Anyway, they're very cute. They smell amazing. You can't smell them because I, I put them in the shrink wrap, but they fit in this box just perfectly, and I had a new nine opening mold. I'll show it to you. Whoa. So I had this new like nine opening mold and I have to go back and scrub that some more because it still has some steamer left in it after my first go round on trying to clean it. Um, but it, I really struggled with it and I did not get it to work. I made five batches of menthol steamers and only two actually pressed, so. All right, so I have the two gift sets, and that is the only way um, that you can buy the bath bombs and the sugar scrubs for this time. The next sugar scrubs I make will be coffee scrubs. I can't wait, and I'm thinking, tell me, do we need like a massive jar of those things? Like, I feel like we do. I feel like it must happen. So anyway, these have four, and I reordered a mold from that, um, maker on Etsy and just gonna do a single. And I know that's going to be a bit of a pain, but I really think I handle the single ones better. And I love the shape. I may have um, Jason with the bath bomb machine. I may contact him to see if he can also do that because I am itching to get out my machine and get to pressing with that. All right, so let's package up some soap. So again, I have all my labels here. I have them ready to go and we thought we had kept the toner from the laser printer could not find it anywhere that was so expensive I did not want to pay money for more toner and honest to goodness I don't love the laser printer I would love to just have all my labels printed because I don't know what's wrong with this thing it's an HP color laser jet Pro something something four five four something don't it don't do the job appropriately for five hundred dollars so I have these soaps um all cleaned up this is the evergreen and I do wear gloves and everything to clean them up but to actually package the soaps my fingers are going to stick to the tape so my hands have been clean through this whole process. I'm a very, uh, I keep things clean. This is like my my out here hoodie. And I try to just keep everything super duper clean. So I have these, um, it's like a, I used to buy pickup sheets, but these are just like a wax paper sheet of some sort. And so this is the evergreen soap. And the making of this is on the channel. And it has, um, the swirls drop down there, and then the swirls are kind of not so much in other, in other bars. So I have cut my paper, and you can kind of see. I've cut my paper to 9 by 8, and I truly can't remember what size I used to do that was so perfect. I feel like I bought 10 by 10 sheets before. All right, that did not work. So I don't know. I'm just... I'm trying to get in my groove. I have not found my groove yet. I'm working very hard to find my groove, but it has not, it has not arrived yet. And unfortunately is one of those words that I do say funny on purpose, arrived. I do not know why I speak my own language. My sister-in-law's uh, mother always said trash and cache. Boy, that that really stuck with me. So I've been saying trash and cache for years and years. I just, I, I speak my own language. I march to the beat of my own drum. That's just how I roll. So this top is going to be a little bit, this top one, it comes over just a little bit awkwardly. Um, but it's fine. We're just going to cover it up. So let's see. Evergreen, evergreen. That would be a back label, or a front label. I need the back label. Like I said, my eyeballs have have not been treating me well. I was I was a little bit worried 
about my eyes because I was having some serious vision issues. And there's been days where I just had to like just not do anything because my eyes were just were completely blurry. So I was a little bit worried about that. So my doctor was like, hey, you need to go see, you need to go get your eyes checked, which that was the plan anyway. But he was like, you've got to get it done. You gotta do it done, like go, get it done now. And so I did, and that was a little over a week ago. And my eyes are fine. No, nothing wrong with my vision anymore. I've like, um, any more than I have. I, uh, the last time I got new glasses was like eight years ago. Because I don't wear them all the time, obviously. <laughs> um, anyway, he said, hey, you can get new glasses if you want. You don't need to. The prescription hasn't even changed. So, we've come to find out that it's this dry Montana air and my eyeballs are dry. And So, once we've figured that out, all is well. Alright, I better not do too many of each of these. So, that was the evergreen. In fact, I probably better not do a lot, especially I'm yammering on like this. This is going to be a grab a cup of something delicious. If it were me, it would be a brevet from Copper Mountain Coffee. I love that stuff. Had one this morning, actually. I'd go for another. And probably will, actually, when we go back to town. All right, let's do, let's do winterberry. So winterberry, we, um... We kind of closed out the video not knowing what color winterberry was going to be. It's pretty brown. It tanned up pretty good. Now, I can't, I can't see the gold really. It's just, it's barely there. It's still a beautiful bar, I think. I think it smells amazing. Um, but yeah, I just did it up a little bit on the dusty side, which is actually surprising because look how the, you know, the purple and the pink, it's not really that bad. So... It's just the the gold and the plain colored definitely decided to go to the tan side. So it went to the dark side. But it's not bad. I don't like super duper dark soaps, which I say that as I look over at my coffee soap. It's not that dark, but it definitely is brown. The coffee soap is not coming quite yet. It's it's got a cure first, but it's it's on deck for the next next one next year. I am probably going to check into custom boxes for my soaps. So I just, I decided to keep a lot of stuff just the same. I feel so out of sorts and so out of kilter with this whole process that I decided just, I just need to go with what, what I know and what I'm used to and then we can adjust. So I do that a little bit longer too as I fold it over, by the way, if you notice, I fold over quite a bit. I just, and it makes it a little bit bumpy, but I really do just find it easier. Plus some of the bars end up being a little bit larger. Anyway, so like figgy cream, because I was just kind of winging it, it's, it's a little bit bigger, you can, you can see on that. All right. All right, let me see here. I feel so wacky doodle. All right, so we'll do this, and then I'm gonna have to cut some more of these papers. So we've been to town this morning. So we had a little heat wave, and it's been quite nice. And so we made the plan to get up and get the truck to town for some new tires this morning. And my husband was like, these are just too long. They're just too long. Okay, we'll do this one. Um, he's like, it's just snowing a little bit. The roads are gonna be fine. The roads were not fine. And I was driving my Suburban, which I've had for about ever. It's 11 years old and we didn't need four wheel drive living in town in Missouri when we had it. So um, it doesn't have four wheel drive. So it was a little bit, it was a little iffy, but I got the job done. 
I got her into town. My husband said I was afraid you were, because I was following him in the truck, and he was like, I was afraid you were white knuckling it. And I was like, actually, I wasn't scared, because I'm kind of a timid driver in the first place. I was like, I wasn't scared, but two out of five stars, do not recommend. Do not recommend. It is just not made for this country. And he was like, well, I might have been in the dually, but I wasn't in much better shape than you are because when we got to the the place um, to get the tires to drop it off, they were like, do you want these tires back? Because, you know, most people are just switching over to their winter tires. And so they keep all their tires. And my husband's like, no, I don't want my tires. They are really bad. And the dude went out to the truck and was doing the scan to see the tread depth and you know with all I don't know what he was doing all I know is he had this cool little thing and he went to the tires and was like Ugh. anyway he was like nope you don't want those tires those tires are no good so we're getting new tires on the dually today and so that should be good I've driven in the snow you know I haven't lived in Montana in 30 30 years almost until last year but I haven't driven in the snow very much in my lifetime, but I did drive some last year and I was in the dually. So I need some more of these sheets. So I get them in the 12 by 12. Like I said, I think I must have had 10 by 10 last year or something like that. I don't usually do this sitting down. I usually do this clear up high on one of my I give this thing the side eye because it falls down and my last one would go up way higher. So when it falls down, I can't quite get it into the corner. So I give this thing a little bit of the side eye. I feel like it's not as good as my old trusty, trusty cutter. And again, no, no thing there. So it's not as easy to get these picked up. So those were eight. No wait, not, it was the nine. Let's go with, let's try seven. So I cut nine inches, now seven inches. Let's, no, that, that's the inappropriate cutage. It's the nine we don't like. It's the nine that's no good. So let's go to eight. Let's take a little bit off of there. So I ordered a whole bunch of like plastic storage baskets because I don't know where any of my plastic storage baskets, I don't know where anything is. I think we, I think we uh, inadvertently, my husband inadvertently left a bunch of my business stuff in Missouri when he went back. So what am I doing? Wait. Eight by eight's not right though. I think I still need it nine. I think it's nine. What did I just do? I gotta quit talking because I'm getting confuzzled. Confuzzled, confuzzled, confuzzled. So those are eight. All right, I don't know. I'm just trying to take this through. So, okay, so let's do eight by seven and let's see how that goes. I don't think that's going to work very well, but let's try it. I hate this waste, so this is, this is just no good. Not working out very well. So, yeah, now this is no go. This is not right. This is not right. Let's do a Merry Cranberry, which turned out beautiful and it's spectacular. The snow is so pretty. So, yeah, so this this is where I, I went awry because I don't, I didn't want it that long, but I need the width. So... Anyway, they'll work. They will work for now. I do love the snow though. And we're in an El Nino pattern, so I don't think we're gonna have quite as much snow this year. So that definitely ended up not as long right there. You probably You're not really seeing this part, are <laughs> Oh goodness. If I bend the camera down too far, then you can't see me, my face when I'm talking to you. But if 
I leave it up, you don't really see anything else. So my cutie Mary Cranberry labels. So I've been watching suits. I don't know why, but that's all I'm thinking about at the moment which is suits. I really enjoy Mike and Harvey as as people do. They tend to be a bit on the armory side. So there's the Mary Cranberry soap. Nice. Very nice. I am so out of sorts. Now, um I hear some weird noises out there. I'm going to have to get some brown paper wrappers for my crema. But yeah, I just, I did not do these appropriately. And I've been watching Suits. My daughter and I, we like to um, lay in bed at night and watch the television. We've been watching some Vlogmases. But we do like to have a television show. She's not really into Suits, but... She will lay there with me with her headphones on doing other things while I watch Suits. And I really quite like it. And it's just, it just really goes to show how much the legal system in America is just a, it's just a game. It's just a game. It's just a game. And you have to have a lot of money to win in that game. It's kind of funny that I enjoy watching a legal drama based out of New York, especially the Southern District. On occasion, they talk about the Southern District of New York. For those that don't know, I don't really like to talk about it because it hurts my heart, but it's not so bad anymore. But I was sued for um, accessibility because I didn't have alt text on my photos on the website. So that was out of the Southern District of New York City, so New York. New York City so that's in my past but not too at the same time all right so we have figgy cream and it turned out that when I made this this was the first first batch that I made in Montana it ended up having some air air bubbles like using my brand new KitchenAid mixer and so this one does have a little bit of a bumpy texture but it's mostly exaggerated by the cutter and the wires themselves. So once you start using it, it shouldn't um, be that bad. Get all nice and smooth again. But this one does have a little bit of a texture. We're going to save this for a different batch. Because the figgy cream is just a, a hint taller. But I'm amazed every day that I enjoy watching suits. Amazed. So I need nine for sure this way. So the nine, yes. And let's try, let's try like seven and a half this way. My noggin is so very confused, so we're just gonna start that over and go back to what I was doing because those still fit better. So we've been thinking I might need a television up here. There's a very beautiful wall over here that you will see in the tour someday soon. And there's space there for television. I think it'd be perfect. My last space, I had a television in Missouri, but I didn't, it wasn't very easy to really see it. So, I think that I am going to like it in here much better. And then I could watch. You see what I mean? How I struggle? Then I could watch more fun things. Alright. I guess I still haven't learned. So, we'll scoot back just a little bit. So, if I just use my noggin and turn it around. Sometimes I worry about myself because I'm a little bit nutty on occasion. A little bit nutty.
So I think I'm just going to show you the other soaps. Because I think that this is getting to be a very boring video because I don't actually know what to say anymore. So I will just show you the rest of the things. And like I said, I don't really have the, uh, I don't have the label. I don't know if I said that right. I don't have the labels yet for the uh, tallow soaps. I'm almost done. I just I have been having a hard time finding the art that I want for it. For both of those. All right, so there we have like the piggy cream. That's cute. All right, so let me just show you what's left then because this is getting to probably be a really ridiculous video. All right, so here we have, this is crema cacao, and it is cream and loads of cocoa butter. Loads of cocoa butter. That's what makes this one so good. It has just a slight natural cocoa butter scent. It's so good. So I did go with the Spanish name on that one like ages ago because my husband's family is Spanish from the Canary Islands. So um, yeah, it was just kind of a fun, fun thing to go with and then this one this one is the orange spice tallow soap tallow and cream so good so good and then this one is quite a bit whiter see? can you see and this one is the peppermint tallow and cream soap and it is just oh so good oh Speaking of my friend, I wanted to show you something. My friend Jody, with Gording Around, sent me a birthday present. And I feel like, I'm just going to use a little something from what I'm going to show you next. Look, she got me a road sign, Missouri River Silt. Isn't it awesome? I love it so much. I love it so much. I haven't decided where I'm going to put it yet. She has, they don't know how to find us out here in the Boontuli. So, um, in fact, our mail keeps getting like refused and sent back because they don't believe we exist. So, and I can't even order from Joann's. They're like, nope, sorry. We're not going to send it to you. So, anyway, she got me a sign. I'm so tempted to put it on the gate. Our gate is all lit up with lights right now. So pretty last year when we were living in Big Arm um, when we go back and forth to Polson to town to go grocery shopping there were several gates oh and there's one there was one in Lakeside too that I love where the double gates were all lit up beautiful and had like a wreath and stuff so my husband did that this year so so far in the curing rack which is not a lot, but I'm hoping to make a whole, uh, several more batches here in the next day or two. But I have uh, the coffee batch. It'll probably just be like a vanilla latte. I scented it with a vanilla fragrance, a light, I, I go light. So a light vanilla fragrance with all the coffee. It's so good. I made with coffee oil even. And then I have a goat milk lavender soap. And I'm wanting to make calendula carrot um, some more figgy cream. What was the other one? Oatmeal, milk, and honey. And then I'm really hoping to move on to rainbows. Like I don't want to um, be working on rainbows like all summer or all spring. So I thought maybe I'd just get them going this winter. All right, so I thought that I would show you some of my knitting projects because a lot of people have been interested in what knitting that I'm doing. I haven't done very well at taking pictures. I do put it in my stories quite a bit, so you've seen. But I thought I would just show you what I have finished. So if you are not interested in that part, I will say goodbye. Thank you so much for watching and stay tuned to my social media for um, the release, hopefully next week. Hopefully and I'm gonna hope to be completely ready every last thing packaged and then I can just like boom get them out the door But for now I thought I would for the rest of us I thought I would show you some of my knitting projects because this time last year I was crocheting and I have known to crochet since I lived here as a kid um, And I did quite enjoy it, but then I came across the crazy sock lady and I decided 
one must learn how to make socks practical. It, it's not been practical at all. My huge, massive tote inside of uh, uh, hand-dyed yarns would 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 uh, explain that it is, or prove, I guess, that it is not practical because these are like very expensive <laughs> socks. Anyway, I learned to knit after that and I love it so much. I take my project bags everywhere I go. I'm like, husband says I need to go into Home Depot. Wonderful, thank you, I'm glad. Just leave me out in the truck, I'm going to knit. I take it with me everywhere and if I forget it, I actually panic a little bit. So. I thought I would show you the project. So I started with a lot of washcloths, stuff like that. Things that I don't even know where I put them at this point. Things I didn't really care about. I just needed to learn how to knit. I did not know how to knit. So I started a couple of pair of socks. And those, and this is all clean by the way. Um, I could not see that fingering weight yarn. I couldn't see it. I, I was like, how are people doing these things? I literally could not see the stitches. So I decided to get some DK weight and make some Mahusa socks, which I probably will put into action now because these are gonna be so nice and warm. But I have these beautiful socks and these were my first pair of socks and I don't have my sock blockers out here. In fact, I've never used sock blockers at this point, but I need to. So I got these really cute. I made these cute purpley socks. I'm very, very pleased with it. And I don't remember what this yarn was. I'm pretty sure I bought it from no clue. I don't know. I don't have any idea. So that helped me, the DK weight really helped me figure out what I was doing. And so the next thing I think I did, I do have a gift that I've been working with working on for a friend since the spring and I'm almost done I just need to weave in all the ends and so I'm actually going to bring it out here and sit here at this table and spread it out and weave in the ends I think that's just going to be perfect I'll put on some Christmas music and that's what I'm going to do but I have mostly worked on these other projects so you will have seen this one probably and I wear it all the time so I made a muscle burra hat and it is just so pretty that it started pooling a little weird up there but for the most part it's just this solid color and it's a little bit sparkly and this is my everyday hat that's the one that i like to wear every single day and then i'm going to show you this one this was the second one that i made and it is actually a gift now the one thing i don't like is that i struggle so much on the increases at the top that it does start to pill and then once they get into this main portion, it goes a lot better. But this is the fun thing about the muscle burr. Muscle burra, I guess. I call it a muscle burr. It's probably muscle burr. Anyway, it's just a tube. It's a tube. So you start on the one end, you increase, and then you just get to knit all this wonderful, lovely, mindless knitting. And then you um, do the decreases at the end. I'm still very much a very new knitter. I only started this. It was my New Year's project. So this was a color from the Yarnable subscription. You Once a month you pay a certain amount and you get a nice uh, skein of fingering yarn. And so with it being inside of each other it is now double layered. And so then when you and you can make it you know whatever size you want whether you want it slouchy where whether you want it fitted whether you want it to have a brim where you don't want a brim it's so customizable I always want a brim so then once you have the brim then what's on your ears is four layers isn't that wonderful it's a Yasolda pattern and I think this is this was good for a beginner good for a beginner so I made my youngest son some socks and I have not blocked them yet so he's not gotten to have them yet <laughs> and uh, one thing I noticed is that my tension has changed so like the sock you know this one's a bit longer than this one now I'm gonna block them and I'm sure they're gonna end up fine but this uh, turned out to be a really pretty yarn from polka dot sheep and white fish I just love buying the local yarn I buy it from everybody but I do love look I was gonna say yokel local yarn 
So then this was the next one I did. I made these socks, so pretty, also from polka dot sheep. I noticed that I get these little fibers with all the, the hand dyed yarn. And sometimes it looks like cat hair, but I assure you it is not. It is just the fibers. And then, because rainbows, I have started, well, I kind of put these to the back burner right now because I'm working on three, the third and the fourth muscle bra hat. Um, but aren't those beautiful? And this is some yarn from Freckled Whimsy. And so I'm working on this one just on Shaogu nine inch circulars. I tried wood and wood is good for learning, but I do prefer the metal. I have my cutesy little bag here and this is my main project right now. So I'm making a Christmas muscle burra hat. And so I need to weigh how much yarn I have left, but um, I think I'm about, I'm probably halfway through. I just love it. I just love it so much. This is like my thing, and I love this bag. I don't remember who made it. Let's see, I kept a, I believe I kept her. So my poor battery died, but this bag is from Barley Pearls, and they are out of Conway, Arkansas. I know Conway, Missouri. I love the snaps on this one, makes me so happy. And I'm working on this one for my son, and it's also a mus muscle burra hat. And I'm not very far on it because I've been focusing on my holiday one, but I just have a little bit done. Just a cute little, just a cute little baby. And I've got these cute little um, polar bear stitch uh, stoppers, needle stoppers, I guess. And then this bag is from Birch Grove. She's in Canada, but I love these bags. It has a, look how cute this, little snowflake is. I don't know if you can see that or not. Super cute. All right, so that is actually my status update. That's what's going on around here. I am just going to continue just to sit here and package up soaps and actually try to speed it along so that I can get more done. And I'm hoping to get some batches of soap made soon. I'm hoping to list new products soon. I'm, I'm really thankful for your patience. This has taken a lot longer. My son, we were laughing. We are like, so our neighbor, he's the, the uh, log cabin builder that's helping us build our cabin. He's like, I don't see any reason why you're not in your cabin by July, or August. And we were laughing like, did you see how long it took us to build the workshop? I mean, we've been working on this thing since March and really into it in April. So it has taken a long time to get this done, but we're not builders and my husband has a lot of, you know, experience with it, but you know, he's not, that's not what he does for a living and he still has to work. So I have just been so antsy to get into here and it has taken so long to get water and the drainage and I've just been so, we are both so thankful for our neighbor because he brings over the excavator and takes care of business. We are so blessed to have him in our lives. And you know, he really showed up in our life when we were like, we don't know what to do. We had this plan, we were up here on this land and we had a plan and it fell through and we weren't able to do it. And he just went, we were working on this building and I mean, it was wide open. We were there, it was not closed in, it, we were framing. And we heard this chainsaw and we're like, what in the world is going on? It went on for so long. So my husband decided to go traipsing through the woods. Well, he found the neighbor and he returned about an hour and a half later because they hit it off, had a wonderful chat. And it wasn't too long after that. He's like, you're gonna build a log cabin and I'm gonna help you do it. And dreams come true, you know? This is really what we wanted in Montana was a log cabin and we didn't think we could do it. And we were probably gonna put up a metal building. I've lived in a metal building before. We were very poor when I was growing up. And none of those small houses mattered a hill of beans to me. I had a great childhood growing up in not the most amazing houses. And so small is fine. I mean, I know people are gonna be like, wow, that's kind of a small cabin. Well. It's gonna be 1,800 square feet. And I came from almost, almost a 4,000 square foot home. So 
it is, but I also live in a 400, less than 400 square feet, uh, square foot fifth wheel. So it's going to feel like a mansion by the time we're into it. But the point is, who dreams of a massive log cabin? Don't you dream about having a little log cabin in the woods? I mean, I do. I do. So that's what we're doing. Thanks so much for watching. I'm going to catch you on the next video.